Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. This week, Space Cat Delphine wanted to know whether or not it's possible to swim in outer space. So in this week's video, we're going to be talking about space swimming pools. Back in 2011, researchers at Cornell University were studying the flight dynamics of fruit flies and they found that they share a common force generation method to propel forwards through the air as swimmers do in the water. In their words, paddling is as effective in the air as it is in the water and it represents a common strategy for propulsion for both aerial and aquatic environments. But does that mean that we can swim in outer space? Well, kind of yes and kind of no. Let's imagine you're on the International Space Station. Air has a very low viscosity or thickness in comparison to water. So any type of reciprocal motion, like kicking your feet forwards and backwards, would practically produce zero force. So if you were trying to swim through the air of the International Space Station, it would require a lot of energy and time to get you anywhere. Well, that's unless you had giant wings. In that same year, astronomers discovered a huge reservoir of water in outer space. 140 trillion times more water than can be found here on Earth. And this water reservoir surrounds a quasar named APM 08279 plus 525. It's a supermassive black hole that is actively feeding. And it's constantly drinking from this reservoir of water. And it will continue to do so until it grows six times its current size. The density of this reservoir, however, is extremely low. So actually, the water reservoir is in the form of water vapor. That's not so great to swim in. And actually, it's also extremely cold, minus 50 degrees Celsius. Let's imagine you find a big blob of liquid water in outer space. The compressibility of water is very, very low. So even in low gravity, the density remains pretty much the same and water can retain its viscosity and coherence. Underwater, swimming dynamics would not change at all. But at the surface, you have water surface tension. And that means if you were to stick your head out of the water, the water would stick to your face because there's no gravity to pull it off. You would have to wipe that water away or you would drown. And also, if you were to try and stick your head back into the water, that would be really difficult to do as well because there's no gravity to help you. Buoyancy is the force that makes you float. It's given by density of your liquid times volume displacement of your object times gravity. So without any gravity, you wouldn't be able to have any buoyancy and so you wouldn't be able to float to the water surface. But even if you could get to the water surface, the low pressures that you have in outer space means that the boiling point of water is lowered and at the surface, water is boiling off, but not into water vapor like you might think. And that's because the temperatures in outer space is very low and so we're very far away from the triple point, the temperature and pressure at which the three phases, solid, liquid, gas, coexist in thermodynamic equilibrium. Instead, the water would be boiling off straight into a solid ice. In practice, if we were to build a swimming pool on the moon, pressurized it and maintained its temperature, things could get really interesting because the gravity on the moon is not zero. It's a sixth of what we have here on Earth. And that means splashes would go six times higher and also last longer. So water fights would be really, really fun. And also you would be able to jump six times higher. So you could do really cool things off diving boards. But my most favorite part is that you could jump out of the water six times higher, like a dolphin, do flips and stuff. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any requests of videos that you want me to make next, 
please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, share and subscribe.